But it's time now for our royal masterminds, Lady Colin Campbell and Phil Dampier. And the Sussex's cheerleader-in-chief, Omid Scobie, has set the cat amongst the royal pigeons, claiming that Prince William repeatedly ignored contact from his younger brother Harry while their grandmother lay dying in Balmoral. In his new book, Endgame, Scobie makes these bombshell claims. William, whom Charles had just spoken to, was supposedly working on arranging travel. Harry sent a text message to his brother asking how he and Kate planned to get to Scotland and whether they could travel together. No response. It was upsetting to witness, said a source close to the Sussexes. Harry was completely by himself on this. Harry sent another text to his brother. Nothing. Though there were available seats on William's chartered Dassault Falcon private jet, which was leaving in less than an hour, Harry was left to fend for himself. William ignored him, said a family source. He clearly didn't want to see his brother. Well, that's huge, if true, and these claims have gone viral on social media. But, Lady C, you're not sure it's true at all, are you? Well, the reality is, if William was not taking his text, the fact of the matter is, he could have got in touch with his uncles because they all went up together. And, you know, amid Scabies, yet again, is twisting facts to come up with a narrative that when you examine it, it doesn't make sense. And my understanding at the time, and it's, I'm not the only person who heard this as well, was that Harry wanted to bring Meghan. Harry, by... Scabie's own account had heard the news from his father. So Harry, Harry had people he could be in touch with. He did, you know, William wasn't stymieing him. And Harry wanted to inflict Meghan upon them. And they refused to have Meghan. And Harry is the one who delayed uh, making the flight and then found himself marooned having having made them late because there was a two minute time difference between when the queen mm. actually died and when that plane took off okay now phil i'll bring you in because a lot of people just think that Ahmed scobie when he writes stuff it's actually prince harry saying it so is this just another attack by harry on the royals yeah, good evening, Patrick. I'm, I'm reading tonight online that uh, sources closely, close to the Sussexes are saying that uh, they've got nothing to do with this book, uh, Endgame. But, of course, they said that about Finding Freedom, didn't they? Omid Scobie's first book that he wrote with Caroline Durand all those years ago. And then Meghan had to admit in court that she had told aides to, uh, to brief them. So I take that with a pinch of salt. But uh, he's certainly right about one thing when he says that uh, William regards Harry as a defector. Um, I think he's got that right, you know, for a change. Uh, Omid has got something right. Uh, but, um, you know, it's pretty it's pretty thin gruel, to be honest. I mean, I think we knew all about this confusion on the day that the Queen died. It's not that new. If this is the best that the yeah. book has to offer, then maybe the Sussexes didn't have anything to do with it. It's quite possible. It's not being serialised over here, by the way, uh, that we know of. And People mm -hmm. magazine, I would have thought, if they paid big bucks for this, they would have expected a bit more than just a sort of bit of confusion about what happened on the day the Queen died. Lady C, I know that Omid Scobie really keeps a close eye on what we say here at GB News. What would your message to him be? Well, I hope he keeps on flogging that dead horse and hopes it wins the race because it's going to make him a lot of money, but it's ruining his reputation. But, you know, I mean, Harry and Meghan can deny till they're blue in the face that they had nothing to do with the book. But of course, their fingerprints are all over it. How else would Scabies have known many of the things that he says, unless he's making them up? So are Harry and Meghan defaming Scabies by saying he's a pathological liar? Or have they been looking in mirrors and maybe seeing reflections that are very Oprah-esque? OK. Now, the Prince of Wales was out and about up north today, it's our second royal story for you, visiting a food bank and community hub in Manchester before meeting the large crowds who gathered to greet him. So this comes 
just two days after King Charles launched his own coronation food project aiming at helping those who go hungry and to reduce food waste. Well, it's all very worthy stuff, right? It's the kind of stuff that the royals do, they go out and about. Admittedly, most people on their birthday don't essentially end up at a food recycling plant, but thus is the job of a king. But, Phil, are father and son locked in some kind of royal PR battle here? Are we going to end up seeing them trying to one-up each other, left, right and centre? I have to be honest, Patrick, I don't think so. I don't have a problem with this, really. I mean, a few years ago, they decided they would try and merge their press offices. We had Buckingham Palace, Kensington Palace, all under the same roof. It didn't really work. I mean, sometimes they do have clashes, but I think we're in a situation now where there's so few working royals, to be honest, uh, that they're not normally trampling on each other's toes. And I think uh, William and Charles are now so close uh, that, uh, you know, they don't even have to talk to each other. They know roughly what each other's doing. And uh, I don't think there's any sort of one-upmanship. They're very much joined at the hip now. They're singing from the same song sheet. Uh, and uh, with, with Harry and Meghan not there, uh, you know, they are very much the future of the monarchy and they've got to look after each other. So I don't think Charles is going to be upset by anything that, uh, that William Good. and Kate do. In yeah, fact, Lee... I think likes the fact they take some of them to the spotlight. Yeah, well, well, this is it, ladies. See, you know, please tell us that we're not going to end up with another royal rift here where we end up with, you know, William and Charles falling out. I mean, come on. No, no, I agree with Phil. What the King and William have done is they've divided up the, the alphabet, so to speak. So the King is covering A to M and Harry's, so, so no, sorry, William is covering N to Z. You know, they, it's, they're, they're not really competing with each other. They are complementing each other in this project. And they are complementing each other in many other projects. There is overlap, but there's also differentiation. And there's room for, for one to be complementary to the other. I think it's as simple as that. OK, all right. Well, thank you very, very much. That was Lady C and Phil D. Uh, fantastic Royal Masterminds there. Just a little bit of time for the inbox. Karen's been on GBviews at GBnews.com on this story. Let's not forget Harry and Meghan prior to the late Queen's passing. We're not going to call in on the family, but we're going to ignore them. Interesting, basically saying that they're not really victims there.